All right, so in this video, we'll be continuing on with singly linked lists. And what we'll be doing here is we'll be calculating the length or the number of nodes in a given linked list. And we'll be doing this in both an iterative and recursive manner. And we'll be trying to solve this problem using the code that we've been building up in this series in Python. So let's just look at this list and think about how we might go about doing that. So this is pretty similar to what we've seen before. Actually, if we recall how we managed to print out the link or print out the elements of a list rather if let me just open up that function here so if we go up to our print function that we did in the very first video we iterated through every element of the list so we started off on the head node and then while the current node was not null so while basically then the node that we currently are pointing to is not the end of the list keep going and then print the data field of the node that we happen to be pointing to and then and then to uh, increment the, the while loop I suppose to go to the next node we just set the current node equal to the next node in the list so this general format is going to help us in at least constructing an iterative method to calculate the length of a linked list so we can use a very similar pattern to do this iteratively. So let's go ahead and create a function and step through that. So we'll call this len iterative, and this will take just self since it's a class method. And as I mentioned, let's go back to the picture. What we want to do is start from the beginning of the list. So set a current node equal to the head of the list, and then go through each of the nodes until we hit null, and then we'll keep a running tally of how many nodes we've encountered. So let's go ahead and set uh, a count variable. Let's set count is equal to zero. This will keep track of the number of nodes we've encountered thus far. And then we'll set current node equal to the front of the list, so self.head. And then what we can do is we can say while current node is not none, so while it's still a valid node object, we can keep going through the list. So we'll say count plus equal one and current node is equal to the next, so current node.next. And then what we can do is return the count variable, and this will let us know how many elements are in the list. So let's go ahead and verify that this actually does what we expect it to do. As before, there's a linked list object I've created here, and there's four entries, A, B, C, and D. So in theory, if I'm just going to go ahead and comment out this print statement as well, if we print out the uh, length of this, so for instance, if we say ll list or l list dot length iterative we should, and I also want to print this out to the screen, we should get four. So let me go ahead and write that and give it a run. Uh, let's see, so I think there's something from before. Okay, so I think there was an error in another function that was written before, so I've changed that and I made sure to update it to the uh, GitHub link, so that way it was just a missing sem semicolon, nothing big. Let me go ahead and run this again. So right, so what we see here is the uh, number four, which gives us the length of the list. By the way, if you uh, are curious, if you have been actually writing the code following along, the line that I changed just now was this line here. Uh, there was not a semicolon. I, it was my mistake. I forgot that from the previous video. If you downloaded the code from the GitHub repo, this won't be a problem for you, so don't worry about that. Anyway, let's move along here and uh, go on to the recursive implementation of calculating the length. So let's comment this out and consider how we can go about making this recursive. So I'm going to go ahead and say len recursive. And in this case, what we'll do is we're also going to pass in a node. So this is going to be, if we want to calculate the length of the whole list, what we're going to be passing in here is the start of the list. And on each recursive call, we're going to take that node and move it to the next one. Because we essentially, anytime we have a recursive function, we need a base case which is, let's go ahead and write the base case actually. What is the base case for this recursive call? Basically, if we've, if we've encountered the end of the list, if the node, if the head of the node, sorry, the head of the list, if we are now at null, if it's none, then that is our base case and that's when we return zero. So if the node is none, we can just return zero, that's our base case. Otherwise, what we do is we call len recursive itself, and then what we do is we pass in the next node. So what we can do is we can say return one plus 
what we're going to return from this, which is len recursive uh, node dot next. So how do we call this function? Well, similarly, we're going to call it in a way that we did to the iterative function. But what we're going to do is we're going to say prints l list dot len recursive, and then what we're going to do is we're going to pass it in the node that corresponds to the head of the list. And the way we can do that is we can say l list dot head. So that is the node that we're going to, and actually uh, this turned red because it's a class method, so I need a self dot there. Uh, so let me just make sure that's okay. Right. So basically what I'm doing in here is I'm passing in the head of the list to this recursive function. So it's going into here. This is It takes in the head on the first try. If the list is empty or if we've encountered null, if we were at the end of the list, it returns zero. Otherwise, we return one plus the function, this recursive call to the function where we now, in a way, we kind of decrement, we go to the next node. So as we're moving on, this recursive, uh, the cases are getting smaller and smaller because we're iterating through that list. So if we do this, let's go ahead and write and run this, we also should get four. It shouldn't matter whether we do this iteratively or recursively, uh, we should get the same answer. So that is it. It's a short video. We just went through calculating the length of a linked list. And uh, thanks again, as always, for watching. We'll continue on with this series in the next video. Uh, any likes, subscriptions, comments are always greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, concerns, or anything else, please don't hesitate to ask me and have a great day. Thanks again. Bye.